If you're just joining us, welcome to Wealth Wednesday. It is uh, so, the day. Let's see, we got someone on mute. There we go. All right, this is the day we get to hear from a wealth of knowledge that uh, Michael Huggins has. He and his wife Vanessa are running a business that is just comparable to none, and part of that comes because of their their personalities. That they just can't is a dirty word, and uh, you don't say it in front of Michael because he'll correct you, I promise. And and he does it in a, in a loving and humorous way, but he makes a point, uh, as he always does. And, and I appreciate what Michael's taught me. He's taught so many uh, marketing training courses. I've been to a couple, um, and and he just teaches you these, these habits to get into. Uh, he teaches you the knowledge about the company so that your confidence is there as you're in, talking with people, as they come within three feet of you when you're shopping or whatever, you, you can look them in the eye, give them a, a warm hi, and it comes from the heart, and then you can start conversations that, funnily enough, lead around to real estate investing, and uh, so many people like to hear about that, as you, you've experienced. We wanted to hear about it when it came around to us, and by golly, we want to share it when it comes to the people that come in our environment. I think they come close to us for a reason. I learned that from Michael, and we're so glad to have him with us this morning. Michael, how are you, sir? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ron. I am doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. Welcome, everyone, to another Wealth Wednesday. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day to make some money. Beautiful day to reach out and touch somebody, try something new. So let me get this switched over here. I got some cool stuff to share with you. So hold on one second. Okay, and while I'm switching this over, just so all of you know, we have uh, three, three deadlines real quick that I want to talk about before we get into the training, just so we can all make sure that we're paying attention to the important things. So first announcement, everybody, is for January 20th. January 20th, that's right around the corner. We have the, that's the cutoff for national award nominees okay so January 20th Jan 20th so if you're running an area and a PAC member isn't in that area they might not know who to be nominating for different awards so um, award so <laughs> this also means you need to go get registered for nationals because if you're not registered for nationals, you're definitely not getting an award. That's, that's kind of how it works. So, award nominations. They're gonna be in income categories, real estate categories, service and community categories, uh, becoming five star, having your first 10K month, um, a, a bunch of different things. So if you have people in your area that you know are deserving of an award, then let your PAC member know, send them over the list, and we'll get it over to Mr. Snyder. And we'll take a look and make sure they actually qualify for that award, and we're going to go have an amazing Nationals. So January 20th is the cutoff. That's a Sunday. So please give us the information so that we can nominate the appropriate people for all their hard work. It's been awesome. Okay, so that's January 20th. Any questions about that? Okay, moving right along. Oh, we got something in the chat, something in the chat. What's up, everybody? Uh, do you have a list of categories? Yep, 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 yep. Hold on one second. Let me pull it up real quick for you, Wanda. Lists, categories, categories, awards, awards, Bob Snyder. 
He's so freaking cool, guys. Okay, so we are looking at the Heart of the Community Award, the Real Estate in Action Award. Yeah, I'll just write these out. Heart of the Community. Real Estate in Action. Team Builder. Oh, this one's cool. Market Pioneer. Must be five-star qualified and have launched and sustained over at least a six-month period a new weekly opportunity meeting in 2018, and they must be recognized on the calendar as the meeting host. That's kind of exciting. Uh, Rising Star. Now, just because you put them on the nomination list doesn't mean they're going to get it. We still got to go through the qualifiers and everything. So, um, and then there's the five star service. So, heart of the community, real estate in action, team builder, market pioneer, rising star, five star service award. And, uh, there's also going to be, you know, the 10K in a month, those kinds of things. And then Bob Snyder's got his own personal stuff if he's recognized you. So it, let's make sure we're recognizing everyone across the country who falls into these categories. Okay, real estate in action, just so you guys know, means you have to made $100,000 in 2018. Okay. Cool. Okay, next, 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 next. The next date to be aware of is February 17th. February 17th is the music video submissions are due. Music video submissions are due, that's also a Sunday, FYI, February 17th. So there are the mashups that we're gonna be doing and we wanna recognize your areas, especially the new areas that are coming on board in 2018. We'd love to see the communities do a music video mashup submission all sorts of fun jazz. So that's gonna be on the 17th. You could do it yourself. You could do it as a group or as a team. You could uh, organize your whole area. You could just go have fun and do you and your learning partner. It doesn't matter. You could sing, you know, 15 seconds of it or you could do the whole song. There's no restrictions here. Go have fun with it have uh, get organized. Um, you saw some of the goofy stuff that we were doing with, um, you know, with Game On. We put out the, uh, you know, we went to a basketball court and stuff. So the theme is Renatus Rocks. So what can you make in your music video with yourself, your team, your group to represent Renatus Rocks? Is it going to be an actual rock? Is it going to be a rock and roll show? Uh, what are you going to do? And then everywhere in between, right? Go look at the lyrics. You know, so the lyrics say, stick it to the man. The lyrics say all sorts of interesting things. So how can you represent that in your area for your music video? Go have some fun with that. It's going to be awesome. Okay. So let's see, anything else about the music video? Um, does everyone have the lyrics? Does everyone have the, the song and lyrics? Who's got the song and the lyrics? If you have them, great. If not, let's make a space to get them to you because these music videos are a ton of fun. Uh, they create a lot of community and uh, it, it's an, opportunity for some of the folks who are on the more creative side of things to actually get a spotlight. 
you know, the people doing the presentation are always getting the spotlight, but some of you are really good with video and, and cinematography and coordination. Let's do it. Let's go have some fun. This will be awesome. And it's going to go down in Renata's history forever. So we want to get you recognized for that. Um, let's see. So the newer people have not received the latest email. Okay, let's do this. Um, Corey, if you have them, let's, is there a place where we can host it so we can put a link that people can get instead of trying to send out an email to a million people? How can we do that? All right, we need some sort of genius to work on this. So I'm gonna get with Corey. Let's make this happen. If by the end of this call we haven't created a solution, then we'll get back together and we'll make something happen. But we need the new lyrics, we need the new song out to everybody. Let me see something real quick. Because it might be shareable in this format. So it was the uh, Nationals theme song. Pretty awesome. If you were at a regional conference, then you got to hear it. It was awesome. Let's see. Where is it? 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 Bob Snyder. Okay, while well, I'm looking for that. So he sent it out right after the regionals. Let's see, let's see, it's gonna be in here. Oh, getting close. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I will find it and make sure we can get it out to everyone. And, uh, and we'll get it out to you. This is going to be a ton of fun. Okay. Next date is a money-making opportunity. So this next date is going to be March 9th. <clears throat> March 9th, we are going to be doing a national intensive. We're going to broadcast it through the business center. So you could set up a room, put a bunch of people in it, and they can be there just like it's an intensive for them. Though this is going to be on a Saturday. And guess who the trainer is? Garrett Gunderson. This is going to be an awesome workshop. Uh, we're gonna go over the new rules of money. I don't know if that's exactly what the title is called, um, let's pretend like it is for now, new rules of money or, um, or wealth acceleration. Wow, my handwriting today, huh? Wealth acceleration. Something along those lines, because with the, with the, um, with the change in some tax stuff, with the change in business owner, policies that the government's created. The guys at Wealth Factory and Garrett Gunderson have some new ideas and some new ways of going about this whole business thing for us. It's gonna be an all day workshop. It is gonna be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain time, mountain time. So mountain time right now is 8.25, okay? so. Adjust accordingly. So build up your rooms. Um, teach your people that are in more remote areas, you know, to pack their house too. Say, hey, if you're going to stream it at your house, make sure you have your neighbors over and your coworkers and, and the person at the coffee shop and the grocer. Have everyone show up. Do not, do not discriminate. Do not judge. Don't, don't say, oh, I think you're too dumb to make it work or anything like that. It, if, if someone is sufficiently inspired, they're gonna do it. It doesn't require an IQ, it requires inspiration. 
So you can go inspire these people to take action, change their life, create wealth, and join you March 9th for the intensive. So here in Denver, that's what we're going to do. We rented out a big old room. We're going to pack the house with 200 people. And, um, and when they take a break doing their, their corporate intensive, <clears throat> I think between like 11 a.m. and noon, before they do their lunch break, there's going to be a five pillars presentation. So if you aren't very good at delivering the five pillars, then by all means, just keep broadcasting it. And then we'll do a noon to, I think, 1.30 lunch. Maybe one o'clock. Anyway, then there's going to be a lunch. So depending on your area and what you're trying to do, maybe you cater lunch, right? Or maybe you just um, send people out for lunch. Or maybe you do a work through lunch. Cool. Um, and then we'll wrap up at five. And so, so in Denver, you know what I might do with the five pillars is I'm probably just going to do it myself. But for those of you who are brand new or you're trying to start an area, this is a great reason to start an area. And then you can let whoever corporate decided to do the presentation, just talk to your guests via the internet. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then as far as, you know, structuring it, are you going to charge per seat? Are you going to charge per IMA? And then the IMA can bring guests for free. You decide that for your area. Um, but the key is be consistent with it. Whatever you decide, there's no right or wrong. Just keep building for events. Keep sharing with people. Don't judge. Right? There, here's another thing to remind yourself about judging. There are three kinds of people in the world. Three kinds of people. In case you didn't know, I'm going to judge them this way. No. <laughs> okay, three kinds. There are winners, there are losers, and there are people who haven't figured out how to win. Okay? There are winners and losers, and people haven't figured out how to win. So when you're talking to people, don't go, oh, that's a loser, that's a winner. Don't do that. Instead, if someone's struggling, be like, all right, that's probably someone who hasn't figured out how to win. Good thing I'm here. Good thing we're hosting this workshop. Good thing we're doing this. Good thing we're doing that. Look at people correctly. Look at people non-judgmental. You just haven't figured out how to win. Come to my workshop. I can help. And uh, yeah, we're definitely not gonna have an issue with streaming. We already fixed that. We knew, we know what, what happened, what went well, what we could do better next time. There's already checks and balances in place in the procedure. So streaming will no longer be an issue. We fixed it. Cool. All right, so Ron put in the chat box here. If you go to the corporate emails under the communication tab, you'll see the music video email from November 22nd. So check that out. Okay, corporate, corporate emails under the communications tab. So you know the same place where you go to check the calendar? Just right below that is the spot that says corporate emails. And then just go to November 22nd. Thanks, Ron. It's going to be a ton of fun, guys. Get the lyrics, learn it. The lyrics are empowering. You can catch yourself just singing them throughout your day because they're empowering. All right. Now let's switch over. If, if there are no questions about these dates, we're going to bring them up a few more times as we get closer just to make sure everyone's aware. Um, and then I will be, I'm going to be transitioning to the training here in just a moment. So any questions? We've got January 20th coming up. Award nominees, February 17th for the music video mashup, All right? Just remember to check your corporate emails. Just make a note in here. So corporate email from November 22nd, you'll find the lyrics and everything that you need in there.
Wonderful. Okay, and then March 9th, clear your schedule. Garrett Gunderson is like our second or third most productive instructor when it comes to helping us with sales. So Mark Kohler is number one. Uh, I think Chris Albin, in my opinion, is number two. And then Garrett Gunderson is number three for creating intrigue, for creating value in, a, in just a couple hours, enough for people to want to buy. So move this to the top of your agenda for marketing purposes. It's only a couple weeks away. It's right before nationals. So let's leverage that. Cool. No questions. That must mean I did a good job. <laughs> okay. Now let's get into some training. I'll just switch my screen here. Mm. Train a new drink, guys. So you know what I told you about should be having coffee every day. It's a diuretic, not necessarily best for longevity. Let me switch it up with some kombucha, get some good drinks going on. Uh, someone just recommended Sanjeevani. So I'm, I'm, I'm drinking some Sanjeevani. It's like a meal replacement, it's awesome. Um, no caffeine, no sugar, no crashes. All right, PowerPoint, here we go. Switch, boom, boom, boom. All right. Talked about the law of the mirror. So if you guys remember, we ended on the law of the mirror. Dun, 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 dun. How do I spell what, Hira? Oh. <laughs> um, all right, I'll just type it in real quick. I think it's like that. Sanjeevani. Something like that. Sanjeevani. Cool. Okay. So the next law in the law of growth that we're going to be talking about over our five part series, this is part two, is the law of reflection. This law in our laws of growth, this is something that a lot of people neglect, unfortunately. They think it's a waste of time or they think. Someone else could do it for them. But the law of reflection, it's time to pause. It's time to catch up with what you're doing. You're taking action, but then are you also growing? In, in your periods of reflection, your growth can catch up with you. So check that out. And at any point, if you want to take screenshots of the things you're seeing here so you can talk to your team member about it, then by all means. So a self-imposed timeout to create a new future. Here's some benefits of pausing. Uh, reflection turns your experience into insight. Everyone needs a time and a place alone. It's a place to expand your thinking. And especially if you're a leader leading an organization, reflecting on all the people in your organization and how your new decisions can affect them. So the power of pausing. Now, here are a couple things about the power of I. As we're pausing we're, and we're reflecting, it's time to investigate. Find meaning in each experience. It's also time to incubate, right? There's no rush to do any of this. Illumination, shedding some light and placing value on your experiences and putting them in the proper context. Illustration, expanding on those lessons what else can you draw from them? So while you're doing your reflection, be thinking about these. Can you find a meaning in your experience or is it just an experience? And then in case you didn't know, to get the right answer, you have to ask the right question. Okay, some of you are, are in a world of frustration because your questions suck. You might ask, be asking questions like, why can't I make a sale? Or why can't I this? Why can't I that? Those, that question structure is awful. What if you started asking, how can I? How can I enjoy the process? How can I make more sales? How can I? All right, so here's some questions to be asking yourself in reflection time. Now reflect once a week for an hour or so. Reflect once a month for a good half day. And reflect once a year for several days, maybe even a week. So here's some questions. What's my biggest asset? What's my biggest liability? What's my highest high and what's my lowest low? 
What is my most worthwhile emotion? You know, our emotions can drive us. What's my least? What can I stay away from? What's my best habit? What's my worst habit? What do I want to expand? What do I want to eliminate? Okay. What's most fulfilling to me? Are you doing things that are fulfilling? What's my most fulfilling possession? What do I not yet know about me? That's a good question. <clears throat> okay, so in our law of reflection, we're understanding what we're doing here. You gotta understand, this is mostly a journey. And we gotta, while we're reflecting, reflect on the journey and ask ourselves, okay, is it really worth it? Is this kind of trouble something I wanna put up with? And going introspective, looking inside yourself. You don't have to be perfect at it, but just doing it. Almost every CEO of the Fortune 500 companies engage in reflection. Almost everybody that is worthwhile, that has created a worthwhile achievement is, um, is, is reflecting. So please set some time, be serious about this, reflect. Use a whiteboard, use a notepad, use some sticky notes, I don't care, just reflect. Okay, now, next one is the law of consistency. Law number five is the law of consistency. Being consistent with what we're doing is a way to tap your potential. Now, be consistent. You've got to remind yourself, you have come so far. You've been this far along the journey. Don't slow down now. Stick with it. Law of consistency. So... If you're having this start-stop problem in your life with different things, here's something you may have misunderstood. Motivation gets you going. Discipline keeps you going. Oftentimes, people think motivation is what keeps you going. But that's not the case. Everyone's going to tell you there are going to be moments when you don't feel like it, but you do it anyway. That's discipline, not motivation. So discipline will keep you going. Let's understand that growth is not a single event. It's, it's a compound event. It's recurring. It happens again and again over time. <clears throat> so to grow consistently, let's ask some more important questions. Do you know what you, do you know what you need to improve? Do you know how you need to improve? So as far as the how, you got your proper motivation. Are you, are you Adopting the right personality of, you know, success and attractiveness. What to improve? Starting with the small stuff. You don't need to necessarily completely revamp your life. Start with some small things, like maybe being on time to a meeting. If you're constantly late, maybe that's it. Be, be on time. Or something different could be maybe bring a guest. One. Start with one. Start with the small stuff. Be patient with yourself. Okay, there, there, you just can't rush the process of growth. You can't, uh, if you're thinking about planting carrots, right? Uh, I had a great little conversation with someone last night about if you're not patient, let's say you're a carrot farmer, you go, you go put some, some seeds in the ground and you go check the next day. Is there going to be a carrot there? No, you just ruin the environment that the carrot could happen. So be patient. We're growing. And then value the process. See, again, this comes back to enjoying the process, being committed to the process, and not just being so focused on your goal. Okay, if you if you have two eye, if you have one eye on your goal, you can only have one eye on your process or on your path. So just keep both eyes on your process, and no matter what your goals will happen, it's an automatic thing. Take a screenshot of this. I really like this quote, and this can help with some conversations in your market, you walk into an office, someone's complaining or talking about dropping out and say, hey, look, successful people have the habit of doing the things that failures don't like to do. The successful people don't like to do them either, but the difference is his dislike is subordinated to the strength of his purpose. So if your purpose is more important than, than your process, you're gonna stick to your process because your purpose has strength. Okay? Not everyone likes to get up early every day and, 
and do all the necessary things. It's not that we like being disciplined or like being consistent. It's just that my purpose is so important that I'll get over my discomfort. Okie doke. Growing consistently. So we talked about the what to improve, talked about the how to improve. What about the why to improve? So we gotta be aware that too often for some people, quitting has become a habit. You know, two, three months into something, they quit, they complain, they justify, they blame, and they're out. Let's make sure that this isn't becoming a habit. If we wanna be consistent, let's consistently Share gratitude if we're going to share something. Do you know when you are supposed to improve? See, like sometimes we put these self-imposed rules on us. And we say, we have to this or we have to that by this date or by this time. But there's no someday on the calendar. This is today. This is daily. This is not someday. All right, now here's another, I'm gonna get through with this, you're gonna to wanna to take a screenshot of this also, because setting goals and being goal conscious versus being growth conscious or process conscious, there's some big differences here. One's focused on the destination, one's focused on the journey. Goal conscious maybe motivates you and others, whereas growth conscious matures you. Goal orientation is seasonal, growth is lifelong. Goal challenges you, growth changes you. Goals make you stop once you've reached the goal. Growth is a continuous growth, going beyond the goal. Goal-oriented means you're waiting for growth to come. Growth-oriented means you're taking responsibility to grow. Goal-oriented means you only learn from mistakes. Growth-oriented means you're gonna learn before mistakes. Goal-oriented relies on luck. Growth-oriented relies on hard work. So goals are not the thing. I mean, that's, it's crazy how most of America and most of the world only talks about goals at the end of December and the beginning of January. And then for the rest of the year, it's not a thing. People don't really talk about it. You know why? It's because goal setting is not as powerful as committing to a process. Okay. Goal setting doesn't really do it for you. If you go back, look at your years. Look at 2018, 2017, 2016. You set all these goals, but if you didn't do it, it's because you weren't committed to a process. You weren't committed to your growth. So this is why I think it's really important that you not only share this with your team, take a screenshot, but also correct yourself. If you're seeing how much you're getting stuck in this goal-orientedness, and there's frustration linked to it, let's switch to growth. Cool, got your screenshots? All right, next slide. <clears throat> we talk all the time about how you have untapped potential, how you need to look at your guests as untapped potential, um, meeting new people, even you know your kids, your coworkers, your friends, your family, everybody. Look at everyone as untapped potential but their potential is not an event a goal or a product potential is your journey of discovery it's an unfolding it's like a flower right it's just constantly opening 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 so if you stay consistent then your potential will start to unfold you'll start to see way more of what's possible in life for you it's just if you drop out early you quit you're inconsistent you're never going to have the fruits of your labor <clears throat> if you develop the habit of success, you'll make success a habit. I love this quote. So people are like, well, how, how do you stick to all these habits? How, how, how? And it's like, you know, all of these habits go into one category called success. And now I am habitually doing successful things. That's the, men that's the mentality around this. Okay, last one for the day. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll get on to building our business. We'll move from training to doing. So this is called the law of the environment. This is law number six in our journey of the 15 invaluable laws of growth. So law of environment. So growth survives 
in conducive surroundings. Your environment has a big impact on you. That's why we talk about making vision boards so that your environment is, is visually something that you're wanting to create. But it is time for a change. <clears throat> Steady progress towards a worthy ideal. That's right, my friend. Okay, so here's something to think about. If you find yourself at the head of the class, you are in the wrong class. You constantly need to be striving and pushing and, and expanding. Being at the bottom is okay sometimes. It's the environment. If you're constantly at the top, you're not growing. So here's a few things to, to point out. Change depends on your choices. So there's a, there's, a, there's a huge connection between what you change and what areas of your life grow. See, some people say, well, as soon as I grow in this area, then I'll change. No, 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 doesn't work like that. Well, let's change in these areas and you'll watch growth happen. So first one would be your music. What kind of music are you listening to? Is it the kind that lifts you up, that inspires you? Is this something that you can share the lyrics with your mom, right? Or is negative stuff going in your head? Is competitive stuff going in your head? Is scarcity stuff or complaining stuff or, or you know, better than comparison type stuff, putting people down type stuff? If that's going in your head, then, you know, that's ingredients for the, the cake of your life that you're baking. If you don't like those ingredients, let's change the lyrics. That's one reason why I love Ron's intention every morning when he picks songs, he's gone through the lyrics. He's making sure that it lines up with something we want to create in our life. So don't be haphazard with your music. Be intentional about it. With your thoughts too, changing our thoughts. Too many people think, well, as soon as my situation improves, then I'll have better thoughts and then I can grow more. Again, it starts with our thoughts. What ideas move you, right? What, what, kind of purpose behind the money. If you're earning all this money, $10,000 checks at a time, what's your purpose? What are the thoughts that move you? What are you gonna do with that money? Okay, what experiences do you need to change in your environment that give you energy? Some experiences are taking your energy and then you wonder why you have no energy to build your business. It's because you might be engaging in some of those. So what experiences can you change that will force some growth? What about friends? Friends that encourage you. That's all we need is some encouragement. Encouragement or silence. That's what I say. Right? Encouragement or silence. I don't need your discouragement. Shut your damn mouth if you're not going to encourage me. Encouragement or silence. Or you're not my friend. Okay? So make sure your friends are encouraging you. And if they're not, change them and you'll see more growth happen. That doesn't mean you need to, uh, you know, be mean to them or, or not friendly. It's just, you're not going to spend so much time with people who are discouraging you. Hello, pick your friends. All right. What about recreation? Are you doing activities that give you energy? Our environment for growth for your soul, what spiritual process or exercises can help strengthen you? What about your hopes? What, what dreams inspire you? What about in your home life, family members that care for you? What about your giftedness, the blessings that you're sharing with the world? What, what kind of blessings can activate you? Memories, what memories make you smile and what books lead to change? These are all ingredients in your environment. And if you're not being purposeful about them, then again, your growth won't be purposeful. These are, parts, these are areas of your growth environment. So these are good questions to ask. Remember we talked about asking questions to get the right answers? These are some great questions to ask. And while you're reflecting, write the answers down and make sure you're making a life that you love, not just a life to tolerate. All right, now, if you don't change the environment, you just change yourself, but you don't change the environment, your growth will be slow and difficult. If on the other hand, you change the environment, but not yourself, your growth will also be slow and difficult. The major key is when you change yourself and your environment, it's fast, it's easy, it's successful. It's the key is your environment, changing your environment and changing yourself.
when you start talking about change and you start getting excited about change, one thing to be prepared for is the people around you don't necessarily want you to change because if you change, then they're going to have to change. But if you stay the same, then they don't have to change. It's, it's intimidating to some people when you're, you're constantly changing and you're growing and you're out there and you're expanding. They're going to go, hey, man, you're making me look bad. Stop changing. Stop growing. So some people are just like that. Don't try to change them. It's just, don't be surprised either. Okay? Just one of those things. All right, now the people around you. In case you didn't know, there's this thing called the law of association. The law of association says we're the combined average of the five people we hang around most. Spend time with the most. Not that we like the most. This is, this is a... This is, a compound effect of time spent. So the average earners, so five people to spend most time with, what they earn, you earn. What their attitude is about life becomes your attitude. What their work ethic is becomes your work ethic. So if you're not hanging around people that have a great attitude, make money, and have a good work ethic, you should just stop. Erase, erase who you're spending time with and start over. Go find some new friends. Holy cow. Right? You can still be nice to people. You can still be friendly. It's just time is so precious. And if you spend it with the wrong people, you can't get it back. So let's find at least one person in your environment who will love you unconditionally. One person who will desire your success. One person who will be mature around this process. One person who will ask you agreed upon questions. What I mean is questions for growth, right? Not... Think about the difference between these two questions. You could ask a question to your friend, what's wrong with you? Or you could ask a question, what's troubling you? Right? You still might be trying to get the same thing, asking the same thing, but because your wording came across wrong, right? What's wrong with you versus what's troubling you? So when they say agreed upon questions, this is what we're talking about, is making the kind of questions that, that inspire growth and that kind of thinking. And uh, find this one person that will help you when you need help. Right? Not, a, not conditional help. You don't have to pay them for help. They're just there. And they want to help you because they love you. Now, here's some next steps for our environment. Making your growth public and setting some milestones publicly. Telling people, you know, I'm going to buy a house this year. I'm going to do these things and I'm going to get committed to this process. I'm going to finish these classes by this time. I'm going to do these, 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 these. Making your growth public will actually speed the whole process up. And then celebrating your milestones for growth as you're achieving different things. Right? It doesn't always have to be around money. You could be making an offer. That's a milestone. If you haven't made an offer yet, you're brand new and you haven't made an offer, make an offer. That's a milestone. And then focusing on the moment while you're in, your, in this growth environment. Don't be thinking about the past. Don't be thinking about the future. Be in the moment. <clears throat> and understanding that you are going to be criticized. And we're just going to move forward regardless of what the haters have to say. Okay? No matter what, you're going to have some haters. You're going to have haters that make fun of you for being poor. And you're going to have haters that make fun of you for being rich. It doesn't matter. We're going to move forward despite the criticism. Okay, now, a note to our leaders. We are creating a culture. We're not as culture, we're not as community. And these things are what we're trying to uphold. So if you wanna make a screenshot of this, turn this into a poster, put it in your office, you know, put it in your Facebook groups, put it in your team chats, just making sure, reminding people, this is the culture that we're working on. This is what we're committed to creating. <coughs> it's got me so excited, I'm sneezing. Okay, so here's what it is. We understand others are ahead of some. Each person is individually challenged. We have in our own problems, <coughs> our own challenges. <coughs> Excuse me. The focus is on moving forward, always forward. The atmosphere that we're creating is affirming. We are creating an environment that affirms positivity. We're creating a place designed to keep people out of their comfort zone. It's all good. Hey, if you're out of your comfort zone, you're uncomfortable with that. Good, that means it's working. Okay, helping 
everyone stay excited. It's part of our culture. With that excitement, then go and change your life. No more complaining. Uh, remembering that failure is not our enemy. Okay, we can either make money or we can learn. This is what Bob Snyder said. There's no failing in our world. You either grow or you win. And keeping others growing, right? Constantly challenging others with their language, with their activity level, with their business levels, constantly growing. A place where change is desired. And change is desired. And most people are afraid of change. But in our culture, in our communities, we desire change. We want that change. All sorts of change. Not in a small way, in a big way. And the growth is modeled and expected. It is modeled and expected. We expect growth. It's not that uh, it's just a nice thing to talk about. No, we expect it. Growth is, is mandatory, practically, when it comes to our culture. So this is where we're at. This is what we do for people. This is what we do with people. These are the laws of growth. We have so much opportunity in front of us. All you got to do is get out there and share it with a few people. Don't be selfish <coughs> with this for not us opportunity. There's so many people that are begging and pleading and praying and hoping and wishing and searching for a solution. They don't care how much it costs. They don't. They want a solution. So get out there and share it with people. We have such an opportunity and almost an obligation to be sharing this because think about how much your life has been blessed. If someone didn't come out and share that with you, what the heck, where would you be? So get out there and share it with people. And let's make sure to recognize the people who are sharing it the most and doing a great job of it. Get me those war nominees or get them to your pack member. February 17th, let's get that music video going. Remember, you could find the music video through the corporate email documents in your communication tab from February 22nd, or sorry, November 22nd, 1122. And then March 9th for our national intensive with Garrett Gunderson. It's going to be awesome. So much opportunity. Guys and gals, let's go after it. The world is your oyster. Stay focused. Stay committed to your process. We got your back. If you need some help, just reach out. Go forth, prosper, for money-making activities. Find the people, tell the story, build for events, and follow up. Talk to you soon. Bye.